All right, you've asked many times, and now that I feel comfortable after putting in the research, I'm gonna share with you the best REITs that I found for you to invest for passive income. Now for real estate, I invest in actual hard asset real estate, like the actual rental property. But after doing the research for this video, I found a lot of these very interesting, and I really like what I found in these REITs. So I'm gonna give you my top eight REITs that I found, and then also the pros and cons of investing in REITs, and let you be able to decide. REITs definitely have great benefits for retiring early or at least retiring with a bunch of cash flow every single month. A real estate investment trust or a REIT is a company that owns and often operates income producing real estate such as apartments, warehouses, self storage facilities, malls, and hotels. REITs are a way for you to invest in commercial real estate property without actually buying and managing those properties yourself. When looking up different types of REITs, you'll quickly become confused because there's a bunch Bunch of different types but the main two that I'm gonna go over in this video are the REIT itself and then also REIT ETFs. Each individual investor should definitely look into how it may fit best into their portfolio and for you personally try to figure out what exactly is it that you want. Do you just want to have some investment in real estate because you know you probably should because it's a different asset class or do you want the dividends that it's bringing? Make sure you understand the reason for that and let's go over the top eight REITs that I found. So these are in no particular order, but the first one is GTY or Getty Realty Group. This is one of the top retail REITs as it holds a bunch of gas stations, car washes, and auto shops. Cars aren't going anywhere and these are vital for us every day. The real estate they own is 99.6% occupied, which is exceptionally high and keeps the risk very low for the investor. GTY has a market cap of 1.6 billion. Its current price is $35 and one the current dividend yield is 4.91%, which is very high. Over the last five years, it's up 41.63%. Now I like this one because of the sustainability and the type of real estate that it owns. I also like that it's over 99% occupied. And the other thing that I like that maybe some might see as a negative is that it's a little bit smaller. So a market cap of $1.6 billion isn't that big in the grand scheme of things. And so while that might bring a little bit of risk, it also makes it so that there's still a lot of growth that could happen because it's not as big as some of these other ones. Before we go any further, you definitely need to understand that the tax that come from the dividends of REITs is different than the taxes of regular dividend stock. REITs will fit into the ordinary income for taxes where most company dividend stock fall into qualified dividends. For that reason, one of the best places to have your REITs is in a Roth IRA. For those of you that are higher income earners, you can still have a Roth IRA by converting through the backdoor process that I outlined here. Your assets will grow tax-free and your dividends after retirement age will be 100% tax-free, which is an insane benefit and a way to get massive passive income for the rest of your life. And just because these REIT dividends are taxed a little bit higher than normal dividends doesn't mean that that's necessarily bad. If you're receiving double the size of a dividend but it's taxed a little bit higher, you might still be making more money overall. Next up is AMT or American Tower Corp. They have a market cap of over a hundred billion, so this is a hundred times bigger than Getty from before. Launched in 2012, it manages infrastructure properties including more than 183,000 pieces of multi-tenant communication real estate. Put simply, the company owns and operates broadcast and wireless communication equipment and infrastructure around the world. This REIT has a current price of $216.72. Dividend yield is 2.88%. Over the last five years, it's up 54.78%. Now I like this one because of its size, to be honest. Real estate can definitely be tricky and can be risky, but when you have a company that has so many assets under management and has such a history of being a good company, the risk really starts to fall. Next on the list is one that most people who invest in REITs would say is their top REIT overall. And this one is Realty Income Corp, ticker symbol O. Realty Income is a real estate investment trust that acquires and manages properties using long-term lease agreements. It manages over 11,000 properties with clients including CVS Health, Wall 
Walgreens, Dollar General, and Dollar Tree. Realty income mitigates this risk by spreading it across thousands of properties. That and a majority of its biggest clients have an investment grade credit rating because companies like 7-Eleven, Walmart, and Home Depot are not little companies, so they're great tenants to have. Realty income has a market cap of $41.93 billion. Its current price is $66.85. The current dividend yield is a nice 4.46% and over the last five years, it's grown 38%. After much research, this is one of the top ones for me as well, and I really, really like this REIT. And if you would, take a second and go ahead and comment your favorite REIT so that anybody watching this, especially any beginners, can go ahead and see the ones that I suggest, but also maybe the ones that you guys talk about. I like to give people a full library of places for them to be able to begin their research so that you all can gain value not only from me, but from the community of this this channel. So thanks for being awesome and let's move on to the next REIT. So next on the list is definitely a fan favorite and this one is STAG. STAG is a REIT focused on industrial properties with a portfolio of more than 560 buildings with over 111 million square feet of usable space in 41 states. It boasts a blue chip roster of clients including Amazon, FedEx, and DHL supply chain. Much of its portfolio is warehouse space and when retailers rushed to build out their e-commerce capabilities in the early days of the pandemic, Stag saw demand for its properties surge higher. But recently, the stock has dropped a bunch since the recovery of those companies have not had to rely as heavily on Stag's properties. This one has a market cap of $6.25 billion. Its current price is $34.90. The current dividend yield is 4.21%, and it has a nice growth rate with the past five years up 45.24%. Next on the list is VICI Properties. It's an experiential real estate investment trust that owns one of the largest portfolios of market-leading gaming, hospitality, and entertainment destinations, including Caesars Palace Las Vegas, MGM Grand, and the Venetian Resort Las Vegas, three of the most iconic entertainment facilities on the Las Vegas Strip. Geographically diverse portfolio consists of 49 gaming facilities across the United States and Canada. VICI has has a market cap of $35.65 billion and has a current price of $34.48, a nice current dividend yield of 4.52%, and over the last five years it's grown 72.49%. This one is definitely the most exciting on the list for me, and it checks all the boxes of size, sustainability, dividend yield, and possible growth. Now this next one has an insane dividend yield and is becoming a favorite for a lot of long-term value dividends dividend investors. MPW is the Medical Properties Trust, Inc., and it's a self-advised real estate investment trust which engages in the investment, acquisition, and development of net leased healthcare facilities. MPW is one that I'm interested in, especially because it's in the medical field, and medical offices and hospitals are things that we're always going to need, so it's very sustainable. But even more appealing is the fact that it's one of the more beaten down stocks, and its price has dropped the most in the past five years. So this this one might be in the value territory. MPW has a market cap of $7.24 billion. The price is only $12.09. Now that current dividend yield is at 9.59%. Over the last five years though, like I was saying, it's down 5% overall. So this one would definitely be the most risky of the bunch, but might be the one with the highest upside. So those first six were all REITs, and now the next two are gonna be REIT ETFs. Just like investing in individual stocks versus ETFs, the REIT ETF is just a group of a bunch of other REITs all put together, and so it's even more diverse diversified with lower risk. The first one on the list is from Vanguard, which is very reputable and always has low fees. And this one is called VNQ. The Vanguard Real Estate ETF invests in stocks issued by real estate investment trusts, companies that purchase office buildings, hotels, and other real property. The goal is to closely track the return of the MSCI US Investable Market Real Estate 2550 Index. VNQ has an expense ratio of 0.12%, which is pretty low for an ETF of REITs. Over the last 10 years, it's had an average return of over 7% per year, which isn't bad for a REIT, because it also has a solid dividend, too, of about 3%. Now, the way in which a dividend is paid is a little complex here, and it's basically a combination of dividend income as well as return of capital and capital gains. I like VNQ because it's a broad index of a bunch of types 
types of REITs such as specialized, retail, residential, and a lot more. You can see here that they own familiar favorites such as AMT and O. So by owning this REIT ETF, you get exposure to a bunch of top ones. The current price is $89.96, and this is one of the top REIT ETFs in most portfolios. The next REIT that I like comes from my favorite investing platform, which is Charles Schwab, and this one is called SCHH, which is the Schwab US REIT ETF. It seeks to track as close as possible the total return of the Dow Jones Equity All REIT Capped Index, composed of US Real Estate Investment Trust classified as equities. I like this one so much because it's the lowest fee for a REIT that I've seen at 0.07%. SCHH has had a 10-year average return per year of 5.6%, and the dividend yield on this one is a bit more straightforward at right at about 3%. Again, it holds all of our favorites, like A. AMT, O, and VICI. I like this one for the simplicity, and it's just like in the regular stock market, if you were to hold VTI, that kind of tracks the whole US stock market. This one to me is very similar in that nature, and it kind of just tracks all the major REITs to a certain extent. So as far as simplicity, if you wanted exposure to REITs, but you didn't really want to do a crazy amount of research, SCHH might be your best bet. So now as far as the pros and cons of investing in REITs. The pros of investing in REIT stocks are steady dividends because REITs are required to pay 90% of their annual income as shareholder dividends. They consistently offer some of the highest dividend yields in the stock market. Next would be high returns. As shown earlier in the video, a lot of these REITs have beaten many ETFs and individual stocks as far as consistent five-year return. Next would be liquidity. Publicly traded REITs are far easier to buy and sell than the tough process of actually buying, managing, and selling commercial properties. And the last pro would be lower volatility. REITs tend to be less volatile than traditional stocks in part because of their larger dividends. REITs can act as a hedge against the ups and downs of other asset classes. However, they're not totally immune to volatility, but they might be just a little bit less volatile. And now as far as the cons of REITs. They may be illiquid, especially non-traded and private REITs. Publicly traded REITs are easier to buy and sell than actual properties, but non-traded REITs and private REITs can be a different story. These REITs must be held for years to realize potential gains. Next would be low growth and capital appreciation. Since REITs pay so much of their profits as dividends to grow, they have to raise cash by issuing new stock shares and bonds. Sometimes investors are not always willing to buy them, such as during a financial crisis or recession. So REITs may not be able to buy real estate exactly when they want to. And the last con would just be that tax burden that I was talking about. While REIT companies pay no taxes, their investors still must pay taxes on any dividends they receive unless their REIT investments are held in a tax advantaged account, which was like that Roth IRA that I was talking about before. So now I'm very curious to know your thoughts on REIT. So please comment down below and get ready to watch this video now to keep crushing your investing journey and building that net worth sky high.